Thanks for joining in. If you have any questions, feel free to drop them in the chat. I'll go ahead and answer them. Excellent. So for those of you who don't know, I'm Dr. Matthew Harb. I'm an orthopedic surgeon. I work in Washington, D.C. in Maryland. I do a lot of same day hip and knee replacement operations. I also do some orthopedic trauma procedures. And um, yeah, I see patients usually about two or three days a week in the office. I have two offices, one in downtown Washington, D.C. and my other one's in Germantown, Maryland. And then I operate anywhere from two to three times a week as well. And um, so usually pretty busy and I do anything from primary uh, hip and knee replacements to revision surgeries to more complex surgeries and things like that. But I am a hip and knee specialist. <laughs> well, you know, uh, hysterectomy is more of an OBGYN specialty, so I don't know if I can comment on that per se. I would definitely check in with your OB, see what they have to say. Um, do you do one compartment knee replacements? Yes, I definitely do partial knee replacements, um, which are a good option depending on, uh, depending on what exactly is going on with your knee. Recover, I would say, quicker from that. The Cool Spring says, is it fun? Is orthopedic surgery fun? Yes, I very much enjoy, um... I very much enjoy orthopedic surgery. All right. What causes pain after a knee replacement? It was done two years ago. Well, it could be coming loose or could be possible. I would rule out coming loose and infection. Those are the two biggest causes of failure. Hey, what's up? If you're on YouTube, I can see the chat. So if you have any questions on YouTube, you can just drop some questions in the chat. I can see both chats. Chicken tendies. Hey, what's up? Uh, welcome to the live stream. Swollen clavicular joint. Uh, uh, lifting patients for many years, what pain management? Well, you could get an x-ray to see if there's any wear or any... Um, sometimes people who have AC joint uh, issues can get arthritis there, especially if you're a weightlifter. Um, you can get uh, osteolysis of the distal clavicle is not uncommon. Sometimes you may need an operation if you're having a lot of issues there, developed a lot of arthritis. I have an IM rod in my left tibia. It's about to come out. It's been there since 12 year, for 12 years. So if you have a metal in your tibia um, and it comes out, there will be some holes in the bone. So um, you probably are going to wait for those holes to heal so you don't have any what's called any stress risers, meaning you don't have any fractures. Um, where are you from? I'm from Washington, D.C. And uh, that's where my main office is and my surgery center is in Maryland. I really need a doctor from having 16 limb lengthenings in my doctor moved state. Very sorry to hear that. That's a lot of operations. Your thoughts on conformist knee replacement? Uh, conformist knee replacement is a customizable uh, knee replacement. There hasn't been any uh, literature to support one brand of knee replacement over another, so they're all pretty equal. Conformist may be a little more expensive. Just did my fourth, first ortho case as an x-ray tech student, and it was amazing. What kind of orthopedic case was it? Was it? Um, I'm streaming on YouTube and TikTok right now, so I'm doing both. Um, magnesium supplementation, you just, uh, you know, there's some articles online, but it also depends what your uh, current levels are. So I wouldn't do any magnesium supplementation without actually checking your current levels and checking in with, um, uh, with your doctor. But the actual um, recommended daily dose, recommended daily allowance is a, between three and 400 uh uh, uh, milligrams for magnesium. Um, yeah, that's the issue. You don't want to overdose on magnesium. So, um, I would definitely check with your doctor for that. Thoughts on adult OCD. I had it as youth as well. If it's causing issues, you can get an MRI, see if there's fluid behind the lesion that can cause, um, that can cause problems. And if it's painful, you can undergo a micro fracture or even sometimes a cartilage transplant, um, procedure or just the drilling. Sometimes we drill into the lesions. If you guys have uh, any x-rays, I am on Discord. I am on my Discord channel. You can drop some x-rays in the Discord channel and uh, I can be able to uh, see those as well. 
Um, do you think new grad RNs might lose their skills going straight to the OR? It depends. Uh, nurses are becoming more and more specialized and more specific in what they're doing. So uh, we definitely need more OR nurses. I want to be a surgery doctor. So what all would I have to do in order to do so? Um, well, it depends where you are. If you're in the United States, you usually um, are on a pre-med track and then you try and get research, volunteer hours, try to get to know people at the medical school. Um, it wouldn't say what are good colleges to go to. I would say, you know, what are colleges that you could possibly get into in your area. So do shadowing, shadow some doctors, find some doctors locally. Um, what's the Discord channel? The Discord is if you click on my, um, or you go to matthewharbmd.com slash links, or you click on my link in my bio, you can drop x-rays in the Discord channel, and I will talk about them if anyone posts them. Thank you for all the double taps, likes, appreciate it. Thank you for the follows. Will a torn rotator cuff heal on its own? Um, a lot of the times it does. Sometimes we'll do cortisone injections for them. Um, but med school is very competitive in the U.S. Um, what surgery exposures do you use for total hip replacement in the U.S.? I use what's called a direct interior hip replacement. So I use a minimally invasive uh, hip replacement uh, pr uh, procedure. I use a specialized table for that. I use more minimally invasive implants. Um, and I do a lot of my surgeries same day, meaning my patients go home the same day. Why is my back of the knee hurt around the side? It's very nonspecific. You know, you would need an exam, some x-rays to be sure. Many people who have like arthritis or meniscal issues in their knee or too much wear and tear, they get these things in the back of the knee called a Baker cyst. And the Baker cyst can cause a lot of inflammation and pain in the back of the knee. Back to work note, doctor won't do to balance. Um, you know, if you're not having good success with your doctor, you could always find a second opinion. I had an anterior full hip replacement. Should I plan on getting the other one done? It depends what your other one looks like. Many times if you get one done indirectly, it may help your other hip. But if you have arthritis in your body, you're prone to getting it in other places. So this is my first time seeing you on this stream. What exactly do you talk about on the stream? So I talk about orthopedics. Um, I answer patients' questions. You can see the questions kind of popping through. Um, and, uh, you know, I try to provide some information, especially on hip and knee replacement. <laughs> Sorry, I, I don't. Uh, your ED question, I'm not an ED specialist. I'm a bone surgeon. So, um, you know, I'd probably see your urologist if you're having ED issues. What's the youngest hip replacement you've done? Probably around 18 years old. Um, a person, a uh, very specific case I remember, come, came, in with, came overseas, so international uh patient flew into New York and um, had an infected hip as a child and basically had no hip socket left. So um, thoughts of a vibration plate 10 months post-op total knee, if it helps you. Um, it's not something I routinely recommend. Um, but if you feel like you get help from it, then, you know, there's no real harm in trying it. But um, I don't think there's any studies done on vib vibration plates. Partial knee replacement with a ruptured ACL. I would probably, I would probably avoid a partial knee replacement with a ruptured ACL. There are some studies saying you could do it. The most common failures for partial knee replacements are um, progression of arthritis or loosening. And so one of the risk factors, uh, you know, part of the reason you do the partial knee replacement is to preserve your ACL, to preserve bone. But um, if you do have uh, that damage, you know, it depends how unstable your knee is and, and what your knee actually looks like. You could possibly even get an MRI to see if there's damage in other parts of the knee. Dang, I had mine at 28 after a periacetabular osteotomy that didn't work. Very sorry to hear that. That's a very painful operation to have. Uh, PAO is a big operation. And so, you know, we have really predictable results with hip and knee replacements. So, um, you know, sometimes we're not doing the osteotomy procedures. Recent above knee amputation on knee replacement. How should I wait? Um, I don't quite understand the question. If you had an AKA, then they should fit you for a prosthesis pretty soon. Um, do you have any experience with the elbow? Yes, I have. Uh, uh, I have uh, taken care of elbow injuries in the past. So I am on the Discord channel. If anyone wants to post x-rays in the Discord channel, you just go to the link. 
Um, on my bio page, you can go to general and then you can hit the plus and drop in some x-rays. We do have a couple x-rays from previous. You have to drop them in the general channel. There are a couple other channels. I know people were posting them yesterday and <laughs> in some of the other channels like investing. But uh, how long have you been on the YouTube platform? So I've, I started YouTube about two years ago. Um, and I've been building it. I think I just hit 200,000 followers on YouTube. So um, YouTube has been picking up and uh, I do post these live streams over on uh, the full versions go to YouTube. So um, I think different platforms have different demographics and uh, you know on YouTube it's a little bit younger population I would say on uh, TikTok um, probably around the same uh, but I feel like I get more specific. The algorithms on TikTok are better at people with actually bone and joint conditions to keying them into my channel. And then Instagram, I would say a little bit older population and Facebook even older. But um, uh, does the cold weather mess with the bones once you've healed from a fracture? Yes. So you do have pressure sensors in your bone and uh, that fluid changes. And uh, in cold weather, you can feel the bones more. Thank you for all the double taps and likes. I appreciate it. Thank you for the shares. Um, so AKA, uh, Sean Davis, 697, AKA stands above knee amputation, other knee replacement. So the sentence doesn't, the sentence doesn't make sense. It, it, it sounds like you're saying you had an above knee amputation on one knee. How long should you wait to get the knee replaced on the other knee? Um, you, once you can bear weight on a prosthesis on your amputated side, if that's what you're asking. But the, the sentence doesn't make sense to me. Hi, from Virginia. I had a knee replacement. How long does it take to heal? For my patients, it usually takes about, for by the six to eight week mark, you're usually doing pretty well, probably about 80, 90% recovery. Is it true that if you kick things with your leg, it will eventually make your bones strong? So we call that Wolf's Law. Wolf's Law means that if you stress your bones and get them stronger uh, by stressing the bones or walking on them or, you know, like MMA fighters will kick a, kick something over and over again, their bones will get stronger and get uh, remodel over time. Thanks. Hey, what's up? Yep, I'm located in Washington, D.C. in Maryland. I think this is very uh, demographic, uh, geographic uh, location because uh, I feel like I get more Maryland and D.C. people in the live streams. Um, total knee replacement, how long will I be out of tennis? I start letting people do tennis drills like um, standing in place and hitting the ball around the um, eight week mark and then getting more into agility, side to side stuff or around the two and a half, three month mark. Um, but every surgeon is different in the recovery protocol. So if you had a knee replacement, I would uh, check with the surgeon who did it. If anyone wants to drop any x-rays in the Discord, I do have the Discord channel open and we'll see anything that comes through there. You can post anything medical. It doesn't even have to be your x-ray related or you're, maybe you're just curious about something. But uh, anything you want to post in there, I will respond to. Um, I think I've torn my ACL again. Is the surgery different? They usually use a different type of graft um, to try and get that, uh, get that ACL to heal. Thank you for the follows. I appreciate it. I had 36 screws removed from my tibia. My MRI said I had metal in my left tibia. Uh, could that still be a problem? Usually not. Usually if there's just like one piece of metal that was left behind, that's okay. It's sometimes really hard, if, especially if you have that many screws to get them all out, but usually not a big issue. Um, what are the requirements for getting a hip replacement? They usually are that you have arthritis um, on a... Uh, imaging, which could be an x-ray or an MRI, and um, you have decreasing quality of life or you have pain. How painful is the hip resurfacing? We don't, we're not really doing hip resurfacings anymore because they're a metal on metal bearing. So I usually recommend staying away from hip, hip resurfacing. I have a question. If the cartilage uh, in your knee gets used up, can it be repaired through diet? No, it cannot be repaired through diet. Um, once the cartilage is damaged, it doesn't come back. That's me, total hip replacement next year. I have really good guides and info in my link in my bio on my website. I have a great guide. Um, okay, so we got a uh, great guides and information on my website. We got an x-ray in the chat. Um, 
So this is the x-ray that came up in the Discord channel. I'll put this up so everyone can see it. Uh, this is the x-ray that came through. Um, you can see there's a big problem when you're comparing the two hips. Uh, the question would be, how long has this hip actually been like this? Um, you know, I would rule out things like an infection. Um, and, you know, why does your hip look like this? Why is it collapsed? Did you have dysplasia of the hip? Did you have an infection? Um, so it looks like hip dysplasia. So that causes the hip to be high. You know, the problem is your socket never formed correctly. Uh, it's probably just some calcium in the, uh, this is just some calcium probably in the in intestines. Um, uh, or, um, hard to say if it's male or female, or could be in the um, uh, uh, uterus if it was a female, but uh, I think this is a male. Mike, I think this is the name, so probably a male. Um, so, uh, yeah, hip replacement, bring the, bring the hip socket down. And uh, we'll create a new hip socket. We'll add some leg length back. The problem is this leg is very short because the hip is completely destroyed. Uh, can you point where the hip dysplasia is? Yeah, the hip dysplasia is right here. Yeah, I do see people through telehealth in my link in my bio. Um, and uh, I do telehealth and then a lot of people do travel uh, for surgery as well. But yeah, this definitely needs a, uh, needs a hip replacement. You can see normal hip dysplastic hip you're usually born with uh when you're born with this the hip is high and it causes a lot of issues um <laughs> if you're in dc may you may i ask where you get your hair cut so i go to this italian guy his name's uh francisco and uh uh francisco is my barber <laughs> he moves around a lot so i kind of have to um uh, I kind of have to find him, but if you really want his number, just, uh, just post your, say you want the barber's number in the discord channel. I can post his number in the discord chat. <laughs> He's good. I like him. He, I always send him business. Um, how do you get retention of the cup in the acetabulum in a total hip replacement? So in the total hip replacement, we, um, there's something called hoop stresses. So you basically core out a socket for, let's say you did it for a size 50 cup. So you core out a 49 millimeter socket and then you basically impact the 50 millimeter cup into bone. So because that cup is a millimeter larger than what the hole you made, you're basically wedging the cup into the bone. And so we call those hoop stresses. And so hoop stresses keep the uh, implant in place. Love the blue dog. Yes, I used to live in um, Louisiana, so it is um, it is from there. Thank you. I appreciate it. Thank you for all the follows, double taps, likes. Okay, we got another image in our um, Discord channel. Um, so I don't actually, it's really hard just looking at an image, but uh, if you get some history with it. So what you can see, you can see there's a little bit of compression at... Uh, a little bit of compression along these uh, cervical vertebrae. So the way you look at the vertebrae in the neck, this is C1 and C2, this is C3, C4, 5, 6, 7. So between 6 and 7, there's a little bit of compression. You can see the white on the back aspect of the spinal cord starts to disappear. So you know you have some increased stenosis at this area. And um, that can cause pain or can sometimes cause um, you know, numbness or tingling or weakness in the hands and fingers. Um, and if it got really bad, sometimes you may do a decompression in that area, but you would try things like anti-inflammatories or physical therapy to get stronger. Um, anterior superior FAI rehab. Um, yeah, we definitely, for FAI, we do do physical therapy and rehab exercises. Um, but it depends how bad it is. Usually with FAI, you get a uh, uh, labrum tear, meaning the shock absorber of your hip tears. And then, you know, if it's really bad and doesn't get any better, you would end up needing either a, a scope or a replacement. Um, is it better to send the MRI or x-ray for, uh, oh, can I show the film again? Yeah, sure. Let me show the film. So this is the neck. I don't know who posted this. Oh, you can post whatever you want. I may not be able to see everything and it's not a perfect film but so the gray the gray in the middle the dark gray that's the spinal cord 
the white around it. The, we're looking at a neck here for those who doesn't know. So this is the this is the spinal fluid around it, and you can see how this is how you want it to look. You want a nice white um, spinal fluid, but you can see how it's kind of scalloped out. So that's a that's an issue. Blue dog, yep, I like it. I was in multiple full arm casts for two months. Is that bad? Not bad per se, but could make you stiff. I'm having a hip resurfacing next month. Not a total candidate due to a rod in the femur. Um, we usually sometimes even take rods out of the femur, but um, you know that's an option. Um, let's see. How long does a total hip replacement usually take to perform? It usually takes me about a... Um, it usually takes me about an hour to perform it. Is there data on how long a knee replacement lasts as far as mileage versus years? Weird, weird to know. So, you know, in the laboratory, we've put these uh, replacements on machines and we've cycled them. So we put them on like a million cycles. The, the wear rate on the plastic is what we measure. And usually it's about 0 0.05 millimeters of wear a uh, uh, year. And so we want to, um, all of our implants, if it's more than 0 .5, 0 0.05 millimeters of wear a year, then it's a big issue. Usually the for the knee side of things, the plastic in the middle is about, um, <laughs> my oil change takes longer than that. That's a good one. I should Maybe that should be my advertisement. Uh, will change your hip faster than you get your oil changed. <laughs> um, you know, so um, the wear rate is very low. So at about 30 years, 60% of implants are still intact, which is good. How do doctors take care of their mental health? Must be extremely stressful. Uh, we just kind of ignore our mental health. I think that's probably why the suicide rate is so high in doctors and, and, um, and uh, dentists. You know, it's really difficult when you're taking care of people and if you're especially if you're a surgeon you know there's a saying that if you don't want anything to go wrong you know don't operate or don't do surgery if you don't want any complications don't do surgery and so you know there's a huge amount of mental stress right i'm taking care of people i have a huge impact on people's lives i want every surgery to go perfect i want everyone to have a great outcome um and we try and control as many variables as we can but sometimes you know there's things that are out of our control like if you're you know, operating on someone with risk factors or, you know, they're 102 years old and they fell down the stairs and they broke their hip and you have to replace their hip. There's always things that can go wrong. So, um, you know, I think uh, healthcare providers partially ignore their mental health just so they can, um, you know, do their job. Does the anterior hip replacement have the same risk dislocation, 90 degree rule? No. So the anterior hip replacement is actually more stable than a posterior hip replacement. So, um, cause you're not releasing the muscles. So I don't have uh, hip precautions on my patients after a hip replacement. How long does it take after surgery for a meniscus to heal? It depends what they did to the meniscus. Okay. looks like we got some more x-rays in the discord channel. So let me pull up those x-rays and, um, we'll go ahead and talk about them. So this person says, I had a peroneal tendon repair where the surgeon put these two screws in. I continuously have pain and instability. Went back to the doctor to see if I could get the screws taken out. He did a broad sternum repair and left the screws. Instability is better, but still pain. I'm an RN, I'm on my feet a lot. Do you think the screws should stay? Um, so it looks like he did maybe a calcaneal slide osteotomy. Like once again, I'm not a foot specialist, but so this is a foot. This is your heel bone. We call this the calcaneus. When it, when it pictures like this in a circle, it's a fluoroscopy, meaning the shot was in the operating room and the uh, fluoroscopic images are inverted. Um, and there's two screws. These are uh, headed cannulated screws. They look like, so they cut the calcaneus bone and shifted it over. This was probably to unload some part of the foot. And, you know, these screws don't look like they're causing a lot of issues. So I probably wouldn't take them out. It looks like the bone is fused. Um, I'm not really sure exactly what the ligamentous exam or what the dynamic exam of your foot is like. Part of it matters like how your foot is shaped. But I would probably see, you know, if, you, if you're really having issues, you could always get a second opinion from another foot and ankle specialist. Uh, what kind of car do you drive? I drive a Jeep Grand Cherokee, so nothing too fancy. Um, maybe sometime I'll, I'll upgrade my car, but 
you know, my car gets me from one place to another, so I don't, you know, I don't need to drive anything too fancy. As long as I have enough room to throw some stuff in the back, back, um, you know, I'm fine. But maybe one day I'll get a nicer car, but not anytime soon. The car just hasn't been important to me. Um, uh, I dislocated uh, five years after my total hip replacement. Was that just a freak accident? Um, it depends what happened. You know, there's many times people can uh, dislocate, like after extreme weight loss or if your muscles get weak. Or if you just happen to put, um, you know, if you had a posterior hip or you put your hip in a wrong position. Um, uh, it doesn't matter where we put the x-rays in Discord. Yeah, it does. So I don't, you, if you put them in general, I can see them. Um, there are other channels, but the other channels are really for other things. <laughs> Uh, what causes a malunion? So malunion is when the bone doesn't heal right, if the bone breaks and doesn't heal right. Um, and it can be the fixation, it could be that you didn't have surgery, it could be um, the way your body healed it, it could be how it was put back. Your opinion about chiropractor uh, care and the risk of uh, carotid dissection. So it's not usually a uh, carotid dissection. It's usually a uh, vertebral artery dissection um, is what happens. So that's with that Y strap with the neck manipulation. So chiropractors are fine. I just recommend avoiding the neck manipulation. I do have people who get relief from um, the, the chiropractors. Um, favorite book? I don't know. That's a tough question. <laughs> I'll take a pass on that one. I, you know, most of the stuff I'm reading, like I love learning new things, but I tend to get it all from like online articles and things like that. So I'm constantly reading um, things on the internet or journal articles. Um, but you know, I would love to have enough time to maybe get down, like sit and read a good book. But uh, <laughs> it's been a, it's been a while. I'm just um, I'm always reading on the internet. Um, 54 year old one millimeter labrum calcified hip preservation said too far gone am i old enough for hip replacement yes definitely um if you want to post your x-rays you know i could take a look at the x-rays but um you know next week i have uh i'm replacing a coming up i'm replacing a 40 year old's hip i have another 35 year old who uh, is getting a hip replacement so definitely not too old if you have arthritis and you have pain you know definitely could be a candidate for a hip replacement could you explain plica? So plica is a thickening of the, you know, what we call the uh, capsule of the knee. And that plica, that thick band can rub on parts of the knee that are moving, whether it's the femur or the patella. And um, that can uh, cause pain. And so we call that plica syndrome and that can be a definite, definite real diagnosis. Um, as well, where am I located? I'm located in Washington, DC and uh, and uh, I have an office in Germantown, Maryland as well. Um, is Reclast good? So Reclast is a uh, bisphosphonate medication. So it's usually used for osteoporosis. There's a couple different options. Uh, there's Forteo, there's Reclast. Um, I'm an orthopedic surgeon. I do mostly hip and knee replacements. I do a lot of minimally invasive surgeries. I do same day uh, hip and knee replacement operations. Brooks or Hoka shoe made a 90% reduction in Achilles pain. Um, I agree. Yeah, both of those are really good shoes um, that can uh, definitely reduce your Achilles pain. Any shoe that has a little bit of a lift under the heel will take some stress off the Achilles. Let's see, what's good for plantar fasciitis? So take a tennis ball and roll it around on the bottom of your foot for 30 minutes every morning and every uh, every um, night. And usually it will go away. If you need to, you can look up some Achilles stretching exercises that can help for plantar fasciitis as well. <laughs> um, how long in the hospital for my knee replacement in January? Um... Well, my patients go home the same day. So I usually have my patients up and walking probably 30 minutes after their hip or knee replacement operation. And so they go home probably three or four hours um, after the operation, sometimes even sooner. So, um, you know, but if you're getting hospital surgery in a hospital, 
um, they're usually for me, it's like a bigger a revision procedure, but usually a, a one night stay. So they would have surgery and go home the next morning. But, uh, most of my patients are outpatient. I'm going to be an occupational therapist. It's a really good career. Doc, after a full knee replacement, will there be, uh, sound? Will there be any sound and how long will one have to stay in bed? So my patients walk immediately after their operation. They do stairs. They're up and walking right away. Um, thank you for the follows. I appreciate it. Do you, do I, I don't usually have to tell my patients to get off their butt. So what I do is I do what's called uh, preoperative uh, education and preoperative education, meaning I counsel them. I give them a booklet. I have them go for physical therapy ahead of time. So people are ready to start moving uh, and they know they're going to start moving right after the knee replacement operation. So if you can preoperatively counsel and educate patients, it usually leads to a better outcome. Do I operate in cowboy boots? I do not, uh, but I have before. Success rate for hip replacement um, is very, very high. So many patients, um, let's see, are there types of orthopedic surgeons? Yes, there are. Um, there are, uh, for orthopedics, there's trauma, there's hip and knee replacement, there's spine, there's upper extremity, uh, shoulder, elbow, um, pediatrics, hand, foot and ankle, so, uh, and then tumor. Um, longest surgery, probably, it was a two-part surgery. The first part was 16 hours. The second part was 12 hours. But that was a long time ago. That was when I was at a level one trauma center in New York and patient uh, got thrown off a roof. Um, I'm 32. I have Plica syndrome. How would you recommend I fix it? If you have Plica syndrome and it's really bad and not getting better with conservative treatment, you could go in there and clean it up with a scope. If anyone has any pictures and wants to drop them in the Discord, feel free. I have the Discord channel open. Um, if anyone puts any x-rays in there, I'll definitely take a look. Is there a new replacement that allows running or jogging or is that pretty much done? Uh, yes, there is. So I use a specialized implant that gives a lot of stability. I keep your PCL ligament. And so I don't put the restriction of no running on my patients after. I have had some patients, especially people who are collegiate, who are like runner, runners all their life and wanted to continue that, um, do that after, um, after their new replacement operation. <clears throat> uh, what happens if a TKR goes wrong? Uh, how would it go wrong? Um, you know, the thing is when you do surgery on anyone, you need to know J. Todd, but I would say it depends on your surgeon, right? Whatever surgeon you have may have their own set of restrictions. Um, I'm in Washington, D.C. Um, yes, I do perform knee scopes. Um, most of my operations are hip and knee replacements, but I will do uh, knee scopes as well. Um, but, you know, it depends on your surgeon. Every surgeon's going to feel comfortable with different restrictions. Every surgeons are going to use different implants. Some surgeons may keep your PCL. Some surgeons may not. Um, yeah, I do have patients travel for surgery. So if you just go to the link in my bio, there's a whole section on traveling for surgery. And, and it makes it pretty easy when you do a telehealth appointment to get set up. And then um, you uh, people just drive in for the operation. <clears throat> MUA, is it painful? Um, when you do an M MUA, you're trying to break up all the scar tissue in the knee, so that's uh, uncomfortable. I usually give a cortisone injection at the time I do an MUA. Um, you know, the goal is trying to really avoid it if possible, but if you need it, um, you know, it can be a reset on your motion. In Maryland, have AVN both feet and ankles. My surgeon is off doing humanity work. Um, Yes, I do total hip replacements and total knee replacements. Is the scope outpatient? Scope is outpatient. Um, AVN, both feet and ankles, very sorry to hear that. Sometimes if you have AVN, they'll get an, well, you may you probably already had an MRI, but sometimes they could do some drilling procedures for it to get it back. How long does it take to be an orthopedic surgeon? It takes about 14 years um, to go from college to becoming an orthopedic surgeon. How do you determine if you need an open or closed reduction? So usually the surgeon uh, will determine that for you. So if it's non-displaced fracture, then it's usually can sometimes be a percutaneous pinning, which technically would be considered a closed reduction. Um, 
Uh, open would be for a more displaced fracture. What is the most difficult orthopedic surgical procedure? Um, that's a very relative question. What's difficult for one surgeon may not be difficult for another surgeon. You know, I'm trained in my specialty, so all my hip and knee replacements are pretty routine. Um, I think you will find my situation very interesting. I've had seven surgeries ending in a total knee and it, something with steam coming out of the, the nose. Hopefully you're doing okay. Um, okay, we got some more x-rays in the Discord. Let's, uh, we'll pull them up and we'll talk about them. I call this hip dysplasia progression. progression. My first x-ray, my native hip, I was 20, long distance runner, immediate post-op, PAO. Seven to eight years later, I had labrum repairs and hardware removal. Um, the anchor was floating in the joint space. Oh, geez. Um, and then fourth x-ray was post-op hip replacement. Um, feel like a spring chicken. Um, so that's great. I'll take you through the x-rays because this is really good. This is, so uh, this is hip dysplasia. It's hard to see, but you can see over here how shallow the socket is. Very, very shallow socket. When we talk about dysplasia, it means the hip didn't form right. And so you can see how uncovered the hip is. So this is very classic for hip dysplasia. You can have different levels where the hip is up high. And so a lot of the times, you know, I'm kind of advocating to just do a hip, uh, it depends on what the MRI shows, but you know, a PAO is a very big operation that may or may not heal. So it looks like you had the PAO operation, um, trying to get more coverage of that femoral head and then that didn't work. And then ultimately had the hardware out and then went with the hip replacement. So the hip replacement looks good. That's in a great position. Um, leg lengths are good, uh, extra screws for some fixation. So that looks good. So hopefully you're feeling well on that side and, uh, it looks good. So the hip replacement, uh, looks good on that side. Is that a birth defect? Uh, developmental dysplasia of the hip. I wouldn't, you know, it's a malformed hip socket, but it's very common. Um, the, uh, many people have it and, uh, you tried it with something we try to identify at birth, a shallow hip socket so that we can put the hip back in place. Had a PAO done, never again, yeah. I'm usually advocating against, um, you know, that because it's a big operation and um, you have to kind of really meet the criteria. And sometimes it's just better to get a replacement. Thank you, appreciate it. <laughs> I'm an x-ray te uh, tech. Can you explain the leg lengths? Yeah, so the way I look at leg lengths is when you're looking at an AP pelvis, uh, you have the lesser trochanters and you have the ischial tuberosities. And basically, if you draw a line across the bottom of the ischial tuberosities, they should line up. Both lesser trochanters should kind of line up. And so that's really how I calculate leg lengths in the operating room. Um, my hips feel like bone on bone, same as the shoulder before they were replaced. Very sorry to hear that. Um, I do have some good uh, hip exercise guides, but really you would get an x-ray to really um, determine how much arthritis you have. How do you determine if you need, oh, never mind. I think we already got that one. You don't recommend the injection. <laughs> um, it depends what injection that is. If it's a cortisone injection, it could be helpful, uh, more helpful in the knees and shoulders and other joints. But, uh, child runs mostly forward, stiff legs, broken femur at two, now nine spiral, no growth plate. Um, yeah, so if you have a fracture into the growth plate, you get one or two things. The growth plate can arrest and the femur bone could be shorter. And so there's a couple different things that they could do. You know, sometimes they'll do a fusion of the growth plate on the other side, but that would um, create even legs. And sometimes they could do a lengthening procedure down the line. Is a knee meniscectomy the same as a chondroplasty? A chondroplasty is usually cleaning up the cartilage on the bone, where a meniscectomy is dealing with the meniscus. All right. Ortho wants to do an ACDF. Do I need a second opinion? Ortho or neuro for surgery? Looks like a syrinx at C7, some mild narrowing at 567. Um... Oh, yeah. So this is the, let me show you guys this. So this is the 
a neck, cervical spine, MRI. So the same thing, we know the gray in the middle is the spine. The syrinx is a small split in the cord, so it looks like maybe this is the syrinx they're talking about. The fluid, the white is the fluid, so you see white, 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 looks good, and then boom, you get to the black. That's the disc that's pushing on your spinal cord. Get to the white, and then black, and then boom, disc is pushing on your spinal cord and squeezing it. So that's probably why they wanna do the ACDF. If you're having bilateral hand numbness or weakness or issues there, then it could sometimes be helpful. I would try everything as far as conservative treatment, but if it's just painful, then, you know, second opinions don't hurt. It's always sometimes helpful to get second opinions um, just to make you feel more comfortable. Surgery is a big deal, and you should be comfortable going into surgery. Can you show a PCL on your model? Why do some docs remove it? Yes, I can. So this is the knee, repl this is the knee, the native knee. We'll kind of pop this out of the way. So if you look in here, you have two ligaments, right? You have the ACL, which goes in the front, and then the PCL, which is this ligament in the back. So if you could see that. So it's easier to see from the back of the knee. This is looking behind. This is that PCL ligament. You can see the ACL in the front. Um, why do docs remove the PCL? Now, if you have a really big deformity, then sometimes people will use what's called a posterior stabilized implant. That's an older implant design with a post in it used to uh, recreate the PCL. Sometimes if your knee is very, very tight, the PCL will be released. Um, and, but there's newer modern implants that allow for more stability with keeping the PCL ligament. So especially in, a, in athletic people, I tend to uh, keep it. And um, it can help with stability of the knee and kind of, especially if you want to get back to running or something very athletic, it could be helpful in that regard. Could you please explain avascular necrosis? So avascular necrosis is dead bone. Uh, usually the bone, uh, Blood supply gets compromised in one way or another, and uh, that can cause issues with pain. It can be due to things like steroid or different autoimmune conditions and things like that. Uh, what was the white stuff in the middle of the spine? So that was fluid. That's what we call, uh, You could, on the report, it looks like there was a syrinx um, there. So uh, a little split at the C7. So when the spinal cord splits and has a little opening in it, we call it a syrinx. Why does my leg lock up after having a full hip replacement on the right hip? Very sorry to hear that. I'm not sure why. Um, it depends where you're having locking. Is it at the hip? Is it at the knee? Is it catching? Is it popping? There's something called snapping hip syndrome that can sometimes happen. Does everyone get arthritis? I think, you know, we're living longer. And so arthritis is defined as that the cartilage is worn away in some manner of an, uh, or another. And so, you know... I think the answer to that question is yes. If you live long enough, you get arthritis because your joint will wear out. It's just kind of the nature of, of living um, and wear and tear. And um, as you get older, the joints aren't as good at maintaining their health. The cartilage doesn't have as much water in it. It gets weaker and then it's prone to tearing. Do you recommend replacing both knees in the same operation? I usually recommend doing one at a time. Um, I, I will do them four weeks apart if someone really wants to. Um, got a run doc. You're awesome. Thank you. Appreciate it. Thanks for joining in. Um, was curious on what type of diet doctors eat. Um, you know, I think the big thing is calories in versus calories out. I try and, you know, I, I used to be really, really big into, um, weightlifting and, um, I would try and count my macros and do a 40, 40, 20 split, which was a 40% carb, 40% protein, 20% fat diet. Um, you know, I have, that takes a lot of work. I, I would count my nutrients. That was many years ago, but um, I've kind of moved past that phase in my life because I'm busy. So I just try not to overeat. I try to minimize the sugars in my diet. Um, and uh, I think as long as you're not overeating um, excessive amount of calories than you're burning, then it's an okay diet. I think there's not one that's been proven to be better than the other. Um, and then obviously getting some cardiovascular exercise and taking a multivitamin. Is the ortho bro stereotype real? Um, I mean, to some, to some degree, I would say yes. Um, stereotypes in general are real for reasons, but, um, 
you know, it, we're in a mechanics workshop, basically. We are sawing bones, we are malleting things in place, we are hitting things hard, and, um, you know, so we're reconstructing the human body, and, um, you know, I think the stereotypes are a little bit real. Obviously, there's different degrees. Some people fall in the middle, some people fall to one side or another, um, but a little bit. I'm an RN student working in the OR. Do you recommend any specific procedures to shadow? Um, I would try and get a taste for everything. See what's more enjoyable if you're an RN and maybe you want to work in the OR one day. You know, you could get a feel for what procedures you like and what um, what you like to be in. I've had both knees replaced. Every once in a while they click. Usually some fluid buildup can make them click if the muscles get weak over time. Um, you know, that could cause clicking. But even in side-to-side -side motion, um, it's an artificial joint, so it's metal and plastic, so there can be some uh, clicking. Um, person asks, where did you study? Uh, so I did University of Virginia is where I went for my fellowship and now I'm in uh, Washington, D.C. Okay, looks like we got another x-ray in the Discord channel. Um, uh, Patrick posts an x-ray. This looks like a child. Um, this is what we call a supercondylar fracture. Um, this is a humerus bone and uh, there's a break through the end of the humerus bone, so we call that a supercondylar fracture. Um, usually for the displacement here, you would wanna see what we call a direct lateral x-ray, but looks like it's displaced, so this would probably undergo a pinning procedure, meaning um, going to the operating room, putting like two, probably three pins in, and then a cast probably four to six weeks coming out and moving the el elbow. Have you done any scoliosis operations? And if so, what was your oldest patient? Um, I've done scoliosis operations that were mostly children. Um, I haven't done any big adult reconstruction scoliosis procedures, but I'm a hip and knee specialist, so I'm usually sending those over to my spine colleagues. Uh, I'm not operating on the spine currently. Um, so adult scoliosis is very difficult to take care of. Hip labrum tear, surgery usually re required, not always. I would say probably 80% of the time these things heal up on their own. If they don't, and you have what's called FAI or femoral acetabular impingement, then um, you know it may not heal, but the labrum doesn't have a great blood supply, so it may take a little bit longer to heal. <clears throat> Why are scoliosis operations usually not performed on adults? So the best time to perform a scoliosis operation is before the growth plates have fused. When uh, kids are still growing, their back condition can get a lot worse. So that's why there's been some good uh, literature actually to support bracing um, that w when we uh, create better braces that we can actually correct curves with some bracing. And um, you know, once the growth plates are fused, there's not a lot of room for the spine kind of readapting to being fused um, straight. So it's a lot bigger procedure. Children in general are just more flexible and so it's a lot easier to perform an operation on them and they heal up much better. Can our lateral plateau fracture have a medial meniscal tear? Yes, it definitely can. Would hip replacement be extra difficult on a patient with moderate scoliosis with rotation? Um, not that the procedure is more difficult per se, but you wanna make sure the hip's extra stable because when you have uh, back issues like that, you're sometimes at a higher risk for a dislocation. Um, what are your thoughts on PRP before surgery? Any evidence? There's some slight evidence, but um, you know I'm not usually doing it for patients. It's expensive. It's something you could try, but um, it doesn't regrow the cartilage or anything like that. Uh, what do you think about fiber supplements that have warning label for lead? I'm not too familiar on that topic. Sorry about that. Um, what are some of the most difficult orthopedic surgeries and why? Probably revision surgeries or people who have been operated on multiple times. But if you're doing like a revision knee replacement in a patient who's had like four surgeries or something like that, uh, that's a very difficult operation. It can be very challenging sometimes. <clears throat> What's an IO line used for? So IO is intraosseous line. We're usually using that for emergency situations to get fluid into the body. And... Um, why do you read every question out, out loud? Uh, <laughs> I like the people to hear which question I'm answering, right? If I just answer a random question, then they won't, they won't know, um, you know, what I'm talking about. <laughs> uh, IO line is used to get emergency fluids into people. Um, 
but I really appreciate all the support for the uh, for the channel. Thank you for all the likes and follows. I'm going to try and do more of these live streams. But um, I hope everyone has a great night.